Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be going over my favorite fragrances from each of the following fragrance brands. If this is a hit, if we wanna see more, we can do that. We're gonna start with Featuring 10 because your girl has a lot of fragrance brands. <laughs> and I've decided to choose a favorite from houses that I own more than one bottle of because obviously if I own one, you already know what my favorite is. So the first one I wanted to mention, I have been waiting for this to get here. I pre-ordered, so I was waiting for a while, but I finally have Navitus Ambrosia Imperial, which is in collaboration with AI the Great. I am over the moon about this. I have tried every single Navitus fragrance that has ever been released and this is my favorite. It's not at all how I expected it to be, but I love it. First of all, I love this bottle. I like the bottles from, you know, the regular Navitus collection that we're used to seeing, but this definitely has a more elevated look. It's very heavy and you actually get, let me be exact, 125 milliliters in here. So you're getting more than your standard 100 ml. It does come at a more expensive price, but you're getting more fragrance. I think she absolutely nailed it with this scent. Truly, when I say to you, I cannot compare this to anything I've ever smelled on the market before. I love it, but I'm gonna say this is not gonna be a safe blind buy just to put it out there um, because it is unique, it's different. So, you know, it might not be to everyone's taste. So I recommend hunting down a sample. You can find samples of this one on Etsy or Mercari. I was able to sample mine first before purchasing. I would describe this as unisex leaning feminine and it is sexy. I also expected it to be more gourmand than it is. I know she said that it's a gourmand, but not a literal gourmand. It doesn't straight up smell like food, but there are absolutely those addicting gourmand elements to it. So even if you typically aren't into gourmand scents, you could still love this. And one of the factors that makes this fragrance so unique is the inclusion of a banana note, which we don't see too often in fragrances, which is so fun. And this is, this is your elevated banana scent. I've tried all the banana fragrances I could find, all the ones that people talk about, but none of them have stuck out to me in this way. Um, a lot of them are just very playful, very fun, young, girly, sweet, uh, more simple in composition. This is complex. And although I can pick up the banana in here, Again, that note isn't as loud as I expected it to be in here. This is like a caramelized, boozy banana with a very airy saffron. That is a prominent note in here. The overall character that this fragrance has, it is airy, it is light. So because of that, which is again, another thing I didn't expect because we see a lot of traditionally heavier or darker notes in this scent and they give it character edge, they make it sexy, but overall the fragrance feels light. So this is something I would recommend for fall and spring weather. Fall because of like the cozy, yummy goodness, but then spring because you do have those uplifting fruity notes. I definitely get the benzoin, which is like interpreted as like a light ambery kind of note. It's not a heavy dark amber at all. It's very likable, inviting, warm. And then there's Devana bringing in a bit of a green bitterness, which that quality might not be for some people, which is why I say sample it first. And then other people, including myself, just think it gives a really cool edge to the scent. I just think this is a huge standout for the brand. This is such an original fragrance. It's so good, sexy, yummy, addictive. When I was sampling this, I couldn't stop thinking about it. And the trail that it leaves in the air, you know that magic that saffron does? phenomenal. And I get about six hours out of this one with moderate projection. I anticipate, this is an extract the parfum concentration, I anticipate that the performance is going to get even better the longer I own this and the longer it sits because Navitus scents have a tendency to do that. But already as it is, like I don't have any 
performance issues. My favorite fragrance from the house of Mikalef has to be Elangen Gold. And before I go in depth with my review on this one, I just wanted to quick touch on Note Vigne. You guys know, like I have been raving about that fragrance since I got it. I own the cube form. It now comes in a fragrance bottle shaped like so. And when they started selling Note Vigne in these newer bottles, the company said that it's the same fragrance, but just in newer packaging. However, in my last video, I was reviewing Note Vigne Nectar. And from the name or the idea of it, it's supposed to be like a more potent extrait version of Note Vigne. Um, I was expecting like a deeper, more boozy, more vanilla, all that goodness in the nectar form, but my experience was much more floral and wasn't as vanilla, wasn't as boozy, and had a bit of like a clean soapy vibe to it. And I received several comments saying that that description sounded quite similar to what they experienced from the new version of Note Vigne. So I tested out and grabbed a sample of the new version of Note Vigne to compare. Just to put it out there, when I first bought my cube, this juice was clear and it gradually turned into this like warm brown ambery color. If you notice, I don't know if the camera, I don't know. I don't know if the camera is gonna pick it up, honestly. This juice is mainly clear, but it has an ever so slight purpley hue to it. And I've noticed that in other creators videos with the new bottle. And I have to say it does smell different. It does smell different. I, allegedly, okay, I don't know. I don't know if they officially changed the formula or not. Maybe it's just a batch thing. I don't know. But all I can do is speak to my experience and say that this smells different. This does not smell the same. Like I said, way more floral. I get zero floral. From here, zero soapiness. This also has like overall more of like a mature quality to it where this one I feel like just suits literally anyone. It's so addictive, boozy, vanilla, like a likable booze, like a, a nice cozy, yummy spice, a citrus blast just at the top. I'm not getting that from here. And I know it's, it's, I know it's a little bit different when the juice is fresh, clear, more brand new. Um, it gets more deeply vanilla, more boozy, the darker it gets, but I never got this experience when I got this. So I just wanted to put that out there because I wanna be extremely transparent with you guys. For anyone, you know, that watches older videos of mine recommending Note Vigne, and you know, maybe you'll love the allegedly new <laughs> version of it, but I will say that it's not a love for me, whereas this one 100% is. So I'll say that going forward, I won't continue to talk about this one since this isn't what you can get anymore. Sorry for the long spiel, but I wanted to update you guys. But anyway, moving on to my favorite by the brand, this is Elangen Gold. Honestly, even if we were comparing these two, love them both. They're entirely different, but I will say I love this one a little bit more. It's just such a special and unique addition to my fragrance collection. It truly makes me feel so ethereal, beautiful. It just makes me feel stunning. If you're just getting into fragrances and you want more experience with a note of Ylang Ylang, or maybe you're not just getting into fragrances, but you want more Ylang Ylang scents and you haven't gotten your nose on this, please do. Because for me, this is like the holy grail of Ylang Ylang fragrances. This could be a wedding day scent. It screams old money. It's just so classy. It's a beautiful, creamy, smooth blend of Ylang Ylang. This is not an indolic floral. It's not so like heady or overload floral. It's just like, it's like pixie dust. It's creamy, warm, inviting, has a little bit of this banana tropical facet to it. There's a creamy soft vanilla that again isn't too overload sweet. And then a very 
natural coconut. Sometimes that can come off synthetic or like sunscreen. It's doing none of those things. It's like the most elegant spring, summer, tropical goddess fragrance with a smooth sandalwood to pull it all together. It is glorious. And I get about five hours with moderate projection. Next up is my new favorite from Zara and that is Majestic Green. I love ebony wood as well, you guys know this, but I have to be in the mood for that one. It's so creative, it's like a niche fragrance priced so nice, but it's a very particular scent. It is loud, it is edgy, it is different. It needs to be cold out. Like it's it's a whole mood. This one is just a lot more likable across the board, much easier to wear. This is a great unisex fragrance option, such an affordable scent. You've got a nice looking bottle as well. It's called Majestic Green and you might, your nose might pick out things a little bit differently than mine, but I'm gonna tell you what I get. This is mainly vanilla, like a creamy, smooth, balmy vanilla. Like there's there's definitely an element to this that feels like a luxurious body cream. It's very calming, a bit meditative, if you will. A smooth sandalwood and a fresh spiciness from cardamom. So not a very complex scent. There isn't like too much going on. This is a big compliment getter for me from both men and women. I had to jot this down and I said, grab it. It's literally 40 bucks. 40 bucks for 100 ml. I do recommend over spraying. I do do that with this and then I'll get five hours with moderate projection. Now, let me be clear. This does not smell like the following fragrances. However, if you like these, if you like scents in this overall general profile, I think you would enjoy Majestic Green. If you enjoy Diptyque Eau Duel, if you enjoy Byredo G Water, check it out. Easy reach, feel good scent. I feel clean, pretty chic. It smells natural, has a likable, earthy, grounded element to it. A hit, a hit from Zara. Next up, Demi Rawling did the damn thing with Fragrance Dubois. Fragrance Dubois has some lovely fragrances, but they were seriously missing this fragrance in this profile within their brand. And I think it was very wise of them to make this permanent because this is like a, the no brainer standout to me from the brand. This is a scent that niche lovers will appreciate as well as people who aren't heavily into fragrances. It's a gourmand fragrance without it being too gourmand. You have those spicy tones, the wood, tobacco, liquor to bring it down. Again, this isn't like a super heavy scent. Maybe you'll see some of those notes and think like, oh, that might be masculine. No, it's unisex leaning feminine. The caramel and vanilla really bring in an addictive factor to it. It's not weighted down. It's not super sweet at all, but it brings you in. It makes you want to like cuddle up, get cozy, but then at the same time, like get dressed up. It, this would make a fantastic date night scent as well. You have a bit of a coffee note bringing in a gourmand element that's a bit earthy and bitter. Um, again, that note isn't too loud. It doesn't feel like things are competing in the scent. Nothing in here feels like it's too much for me. This scent profile just has my heart. When it comes to the fragrances that I gravitate towards in the fall and winter, my kind of style of gourmand where it's not foodie, but you have those yummy factors with edge. And I'll get about six, seven hours out of this one with moderate projection. Next up is my favorite from Mind Games, and that is, of course, Double Attack. This is the only fragrance from Mind Games that I've shared with you guys. I recently received another one that I really like, and I will get back to you with my review for that one. Uh, but this one is still my number one favorite from the brand. This is a very dimensional scent. It changes throughout the wear. When it first opens up, you are gonna get this beautiful, airy, sweet saffron note. It's so weird because it's not listed in the 
note breakdown, but literally on the bottle, it says saffron underneath the name. And I'm telling you, I get it. So it's bringing in an addictive airy sweetness, although it definitely is a fall winter scent, that opening stage gets lifted up by the saffron. It isn't so heavy and weighted. It has spices in the opening, like a fresh pink pepper, pimento, a warm cinnamon, and then there's the bitter orange chocolate combo, which usually the chocolate orange combo smells like a candy to me. It feels separate in here. Although that combo smells good, it isn't for me or like wanting to smell like a orange chocolate cake. I'm not getting that from here. The orange note in particular, I'm only getting in the opening. And again, because of that saffron, although this is like a dark chocolate, it isn't like a thick frosting fudge or like anything of the sort when it comes to like a thick chocolate. As it dries down, it starts to get deeper, darker, more spicy, more woody. And then there's like a smoky element that comes into the picture with the addition of vanilla. So it's giving me like the mental picture of like by the fireplace vibes. It's that time of year, but it doesn't smell like so typically festive, if that makes sense. It's a going out confident type of scent, but then it winds down to you guys getting close, sitting by the fire, eating some spice desserts. And this one has good performance. It will last me all day with moderate projection. And it's perfectly unisex in my opinion. Another unisex scent, this is by Maison Crivelli, Iris Malikan. I also adore Hibiscus Mahajad, but I'd say, ah, uh, yeah. It has such a special place in my heart. It really makes me feel a certain way and there's truly nothing that I can compare this to. You need to sample this first. I will, like I say this in every single video, I mention this because it is different, it is unique. It's not for the faint of heart. I only use a couple sprays when I use this. It's very well possible that I, I might not ever run out of this. It is that powerful. It lasts truly forever and it, truly projects. You know that my heart lies in like the woody vanilla category. And this is that, but like complex and niche on another level. This has a very prominent note of orris. So it's a very earthy fragrance. It's powdery, creamy. There's a smooth vanilla that amps up on your skin the longer you wear this. The longer you wear it, the green earthy touches, they're gonna stay, but they're going to simmer down and the it's gonna get creamier, it's gonna get more vanilla. It's gonna become warmer. I experience like a creamy, but also dry pencil shaving kind of vibe, like this was blended in here. This took me several times of testing it to figure out if I wanted a bottle or not, if I, related to this scent, but I was just really captivated by its originality and it was definitely something for me to like figure out and discover. I feel incredibly confident when I wear this. This is a boss fragrance. This is, I don't take shit from no one. I am bold, I speak my mind. Anytime I need that boost, like this is a fragrance I reach for. And the leather in here is so smooth. I don't experience anything animalic from here. Leathers that pull animalic are not my vibe. Why would I wanna smell like an animal? I wanna smell like I shower, thank you. The leather to me gives off more of like a luxurious suede-like character to the scent. Definitely brings in like an edgy, cool factor. Yeah, so that's that. Then, when it comes to the house of Guerlain, this is, this is a tough one. This is a tough house for me to choose a favorite from. I love the Mon Guerlains. I love Spiritus de Livigny. It was tough. It was a close call, but I'm gonna have to go with Gourmand Coquine. Let me know if you've been around since like the beginning of my uh, fragrance 
videos. I'd be very curious. I talked about it a good amount then. And then I stopped because I thought you couldn't get this anymore, but you can. It is a little bit of a process. I'm not going to lie. It's not like an add to cart checkout kind of situation, but I will leave all the details you need to know down below. And if there was a single chocolate fragrance you were going to buy, let it be this one. This is by far my favorite chocolate scent. I have a good amount of chocolate fragrances. Eventually, I would like to film a chocolate video because I feel like when it comes down to that no, I'm like, I got, I got the good stuff, you know? But this is my favorite. By the way, don't be blind buying it. Although, I think it's a safe blind buy as long as you enjoy gourmands. Don't do it because it's expensive. And I don't wanna hear it if you come coming back to me, okay? I'm telling you to be responsible. You can still find samples of gourmand cocaine on certain decant websites. I'll again, leave some in the description box below for you. But anyway, back to this scent. This was love at first sniff for me. Also, this is by far like astoundingly one of my most complimented fragrances ever by both men and women. Like I smell unreal when I wear this. Also, Eric drools over this. I smell good every day. So it takes a lot for him to like really notice one of my scents and like point it out. And he's just like, that is so good. And he'll say it multiple times a day when I wear this. I love this because although this is absolutely a gourmand, although this is sweet, this isn't the kind of chocolate that smells straight up like a chocolate cake, like chocolate frosting, like chocolate fudge, like so overly gourmand. This is like an angelic dusting of dark chocolate cocoa powder sweetened up with the most luxurious vanilla and then the most likable bit of rum. I don't get spices, rose or pepper. I'm just gonna mention that. And although like the chocolate vanilla rum are the only notes that I pick out, this does not smell boring to me. This does not smell too simplistic. I am left in the most like enchanting cloud of these notes. The reason I pick this as my favorite girl on is because this is irreplaceable to me. Mon girl on is like such a classic, such an easy go-to, works for every situation, I love it. Spirit Juice Double of Vanille, it's my favorite vanilla. But I do have a lot of vanilla perfumes. When it comes to this perfume, when it comes to this category, nothing does it like Gourmand cocaine. Honestly, this is the fragrance to pull for when you want to seduce, when you want to smell like a snack, you want to lure them in. It's for like cuddle, cuddle plus extra time. This one has a smaller scent bubble. It's sitting closer to the skin. So people just want to like bury themselves wherever you spray. I mean, sprayed this. It's romantic, so this is definitely a scent I pull for in those kind of situations. And I get about six, seven hours from this one. So I'll leave you with this. Smooth, magical, powdery dark chocolate that isn't too dark. It's not bitter. Easy to like rum, powdery, creamy vanilla. And I have my backup bottle because it is essential to me. Next up is the house of Rirana. I own Tonka Nutmeg and Vanilla Tea. Tonka Nutmeg is the clear winner for me when it comes to my taste, although I love them both. Ultimately, the fall category is my thing. Unisex fragrances are my thing. Gourmand elements, that's my thing. So just prepare yourselves to hear me talk about this relentlessly particularly come fall winter. It was a shame. It was a shame because I got this at the tail end of winter, but I wore it for like a week straight and was in heaven. This is my kind of scent profile. It's gonna open up with a little bit of a green quality. Test this on your skin because it blossoms on skin. It gets so addictive, sexy, cozy, inviting, seriously fan fantastic unisex scent. Like guys, check this out. Women who can appreciate a unisex profile, please check this out. So it opens up with a bit 
of an earthy green, fresh spicy tone. As it dries down, it gets more creamy, more powdery, cocooning. You're getting the orris root, the vanilla, iris, musk, tonka. So it sweetens up on your skin. It's getting more creamy. And then we obviously have the yummy nutmeg note. If you love the Tom Ford Noir Extreme line, you will love this, point blank period. Although I think those are great, this just perfected that scent profile for me. It also has great lasting power. This lasts on me all day with good projection. So it's woody, warm, spicy, powdery with elevated gourmand elements. I just think it's so fantastic. From the House of Amouage, I'm gonna have to go with Guidance. When I first got Guidance, Sunshine Woman was still my number one. But the longer I've had this, I'm loving it more and more and more. I have this currently on my fragrance tray, if you will, so I've been reaching for it non-stop lately. I do this when I'm trying to get more use out of specific fragrances, and it feels like almost every single day, like I'm smelling the options and I'm, I'm just, I'm just going for guidance. And although this is polarizing, you need to sample it first. Make sure you do because everybody is getting different things from this scent. So you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. Sorry, I just whacked my mic. Don't know that it really falls in the middle for most people, but regardless of it being polarizing, this is a huge compliment getter for me. I'm getting a compliment like practically every single day I wear this. People are like, oh, that's different. What are you wearing today? That smells really good. And strangers are coming up to me telling me I smell fantastic. There's just something about how uniquely and smoothly this is blended that does it for me. There are so many different notes in here that just come together in harmony for me. The opening experience is when I get all of these different notes popping separately. I personally love the opening. It's super fun for me. I love the addictive pear puree osmanthus that pulls like apricot, the pop of hazelnut that has like a creamy smooth like shaving quality to it. It's definitely not overly nutty to me in the slightest. It also doesn't smell chocolatey to me. Vanilla and quite literally the creamiest sandalwood I've ever smelled. If you are not down with a creamy quality in fragrances, I don't think it's gonna be for you. The way that this works on my skin is luxurious. It just like melds into warm skin and gives like a sensual factor. And the longer this sits on your skin as it dries down, those woody factors amplify even more. You're getting more of the vanilla. The hazelnut goes away and the fruity notes simmer down, although there's still like an essence of that through the life of the fragrance. It's quite literally been my go-to fragrance layered with Gritty Gossip Night to amplify those sweet fruity notes. I can't get enough of it. And the performance on Amouage as per usual is nuclear. I will spray this on my clothes. I'll put them through the washer they're still smelling like guidance. It's insane. I am I am usually an oversprayer. I do not overspray with guidance. And the last fragrance house that I will cover for today is Commodity. And my favorite one, first love from the house is Gold Expressive. Just the OG gold. This is just such a likable, chic, everyday, could be a great signature scent type of vanilla fragrance. This is a more, um, this is also a more, um, this is also a more affordable, uh, uh, I cannot for the life of me, a more affordable alternative to Byredo's G Water. In G Water, you're gonna pick up more of like the pine and juniper. There's a little bit, there's a little bit more elements going on in that one, where this one is more focused on the note of vanilla. So you get that amplified in here. But this is a beautiful vanilla option for people who aren't typically into vanilla, or you want like something inviting, feminine, like vanilla, but not 
vanilla in this super sweet, sugary, like super gourmand form. It's powdery, creamy, lightly sweetened. It's a delicate scent. Fits into that clean girl aesthetic. It's such an easy reach fragrance for me. This shines the most in the spring, I would say, and like early fall. The amber in here is not super like resinous or heavy, dark. It's, I interpret it to be more of a translucent white amber just to bring in this cocooning warmth. There's a sensual musk and just a touch of the juniper. So if you liked G Water, but maybe it was like a touch too heavy on the juniper or pine for you. This could be one to check out. And then a very agreeable sandalwood. This is gonna suit so many occasions. You're never gonna offend anyone by wearing this, but it's a very crowd-pleasing, likable, complimented scent. This one is gonna sit closer to you and I get about four or five hours from Commodity Gold. So that wraps it up for today. Do let me know if you would like to see another video with more favorites. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you want to see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.